this lecture is going to take you through the steps of um, actually running the t-test for independent samples. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're ready to test the difference between the two means to see if they're statistically different. This is quite simple and will look very familiar to you. You're simply going to divide the difference by the means of the means by the standard error. Notice that the standard error is the standard error for the difference in the sampling means. We're going to actually pool the standard deviation from both samples. More about that later. So we're going to compute a test statistic. So let's get started with step one. As I go through this, I want to use an example so that we don't have to just use symbols. A research study about how kids did homework was conducted. One group, that group one there, had fixed time for their homework. The other group, group two, had flexible time for their homework. And these scores were randomly pulled from each of these two different populations. We're going to assume that there's homogeneity of variance in the two groups. So I make a null hypothesis, which is about the populations, not the samples. My, hypo my hypothesis is that the difference between the mean for students with fixed time, population 1, and the mean for the students in the flexible time, population 2, will be 0. There will be no difference between these two groups. I'm going to set my alpha at 0.05. My null hypothesis was non-directional, so notice that I add together the sample sizes to find my degrees of freedom. There were 9 kids in one group and 8 in the other, so my degrees of freedom is 15. I go to table C3 and I find that the critical value for my test statistic is 2.131, if plus or minus. If I my test statistic exceeds that, either plus or minus, I'm going to reject my null hypothesis and I'm going to say that the probability of pulling those sample sizes just by random was is so um, small, that probability, that I can reject that null hypothesis. So now I'm going to compute my test statistic. Our null hypothesis gives us the value for the population of the mean 1 minus the population of the mean 2. It's 0. So the numerator for our test is really just the difference between the two means. Now let's look at the denominator. To find the standard error of the difference of the sampling means, we have two steps. And oh gosh, those, those are supposed to show that those are the means of the two different sample groups. Those bars should be over the x's. I think the formula uh, using the group variances is the easiest. Don't let your eyes glaze over. This is not as complicated as it seems. Remember that variance is simply the standard deviation squared. So you know how to figure the variance and standard deviation from previous sections in this course. If you look carefully, you'll see that we're simply using the size of the group to weight the variance for group 1 and the size of group 2 to weight the variance for group 2. So let's use an example. Here are two groups of scores. Group 1 has nine scores in it. And so we're going to weight the variance for group 1. And what group 2 has 8 scores in it, so we're going to weight the variance for group 2. Notice that the denominator simply uses the degrees of freedom too. Hopefully you've noticed that we're really just working with the degrees of freedom here in all these cases. Now all we need is the variance for each group. You can figure the variance with whichever formula or method works for you. I'm going to run the scores through a spreadsheet and have it calculate the standard deviation for each group. The standard deviation for group 1 is 10.38. The standard deviation for group 2 is 151.27. So I, I, let me back that up and do that again to show you. Okay. So the standard deviation for group 1 is 10.38. I'm going to square that because I'm putting in the variance. Now I do the same thing for group 2. I square the standard deviation of 
And now all I have to do is solve these. Remember to use your order of operations or you will really mess up. And I end up with a pooled variance of 128.07. Now the next step, I've got my pooled variance, I simply need to turn that into the standard error. Standard error for the difference between the sampled means takes into account the sample size. It should look familiar. Remember when we got the standard error of the sampled means for just one sample group when we didn't know the population variance? It looked like this. We have the same idea going on here. You're going to adjust the standard error for the sample size. So you're going to replace the terms. There you go with the ands, and then we simply solve and we find that the standard error is 5.50. Now let's look at what we've got. Back to our test statistic. We now have our standard error term for the denominator. We're going to test to see if the mean from one group is statistically different from the mean from group two. So we've got our means. There's the greens for them. I'm going to replace those up in my equation. Notice I replaced my standard error also, and now I'm going to put the means in there. And all we have to do is solve it. And we find that our test statistic ends up being a negative 3.53. So what does that mean? Our null hypothesis was that there was no difference between the means of the groups, but we got a difference between the two means. We found a difference of negative 19.44 between the two means. Our test statistic tells us that that difference is 3.53 standard deviations below the hypothesized mean being zero. Way back at step two, we found that the critical value was 2.131, plus or minus. Now you compare your test statistic to your critical value and you see that our test statistic is much larger than that critical value. We're going to reject our null hypothesis. Then we have to interpret that. The mean for the fixed time group, group one, was 19.44 points below the mean for the flexible time group, group two. This difference was statistically significant p less than 0 0.05. What if the homogeneity of variance between my two groups had been violated? In other words, I had to reject this null hypothesis about the variance in the two groups being the same. Then I have to adjust my standard error and I have to adjust my degrees of freedom. I don't expect you to be able to use the formulas, but they are in your textbook. No one does this by hand.